All right, so am I up? Yep. All right, I'm gonna do a screen share. So you can see, you can see how organized um, Oz was in here. I'm just gonna take you to an empty sheet. You know, I haven't. I haven't now, you, know, you know, last time you did that. Yes. Last time you did this, you, we had to ke keep coming back to your spreadsheet two or three times because. Right, I know. Oh yeah, here's how I do it. Oh yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> You're supposed to cut that out. Uh huh. <laughs> I left it. I left it all in. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about today um, creating qualitative, random qualitative data in a pinch. It's actually based on my blog. So I wrote about it on there, so it's fresh in my mind. Um, so we're going to talk about how to do it. So let's say you have data points, high, medium, low. You want to generate a list of them just really quickly. So there's a lot of great ways to do, um, you know, real random data. You can do it on distribution curves. This is really just if you want to do it in a pinch, all right? You just want to make something up really quickly. So here's how I do it. So we're going to start with the ran between function. So ran between, you give it a high, give it a, or you give it a low, give it a high. So here I have one, I have three. Um, and basically what that's going to do is uh, choose a random number between that range, and it's got to be an integer. Um, so I'm going to just zoom in real close. Whoa, that's so close. <laughs> so here it gave a one, I'll hit F9. It's just going to keep refreshing just to show you it works. Um, so that that is how we're going to start. So... We're going to actually use one other function here, um, and that's the choose function. So for those unfamiliar with the choose, the way it works is that you have an index number that you give the choose, and then you see these parameters that exist afterwards that I'm typing out. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, basically what happens is you give a number to this first, uh, so you pass a number argument to this first parameter, and then it's going to return um, the value that is given by that index after. So if this is going to be a 1 here, it's going to return what would be in this value 1 column. If I have a 2 here, um, it'll return what's in this value 2. I said column, but it really should be um, parameter. So um, you can have as many. Uh, I think there's a limit, but you can have a lot of them. Uh, obviously, you can't ever pick something that's outside of the amount of values you give. So in this case, we have this ran between. Remember, that's picking between 1 and 3. So here I'm just going to write high. So that's going to be my first value on a return by random. Then I'll just put in mead here for medium. And then I'll just put in low here. So this actually works out because we're, going to, we're picking between 1 and 3, and it can be one of these three. So I'll hit enter. Um, and then I'm just going to drag this down. And you see I can just create lots of these. Hit F9 to just show you it's updating. So that's how you do it, random qualitative data in a pinch. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, so what... Why is why is this necessary, uh, Jordan? Say something about why would you want to use ran between and create this data? Well, sometimes um, let me just switch back. You obviously don't want to see me. So, Jordan, while you're while you're switching back, I'd like to jump in just for a second because okay. this was actually part of uh, part of my my talk whenever I was talking at the conference here a few weeks ago. I I, I showed this tip among others. And the, the reason that I, I showed this, and by the way, uh, there's a guy out there, uh, Excel Kit, who has a pretty good, uh, pretty good tutorial on this. Oh, what, 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 what I did is, is I had the random data. Um, I had it powering charts. And so anytime I would have a selector, you know, in my dashboard, and this time, at this point I'm doing mockups for the dashboard, I would have a selector, a drop down or something like that, and it would just be dummy data. And I, anytime something was selected, it would look like the graphs were updating, but it was really just random data that was being regenerated. And mm -hmm. so, you know, for the purpose of mockups and giving the executives, making it look like you really have data behind there whenever you really don't, you know, just for the purpose of mockups and stuff like that, I found it to be you know, really, really useful. Yeah. So, right. So following what Rick said, um, you know, it's like what you said, and when you have this, um, when you have an open course, right? I shouldn't say open, but when you're, when you're teaching a course and someone says, hey, wouldn't it be cool? You know, you know how it is, Oz. People are like, hey, now, what if we did this? And you're like, oh, I got to make up some random data to really show you this in an application. So this is what I mean by in a pinch. Um, yep. The only problem, I would say, with showing this, I mean, with doing this on the screen when someone asks you about it, is that then they're going to want to know how to do it. And then you got to explain that part. So it's good to kind of have some stuff pre-made um, beforehand, but luckily you don't have to think. There's not a whole lot of um, thinking that go that goes into this. So I, I really use it when I need to make example stuff. But I also use it I'm, for some of the data I'm doing in the book. Um, 
you know, want to come up with random categorical data. So you saw that's like low, medium, high. So what do they say? That's ordinal. Correct me if right. I'm wrong, Rick. Is that correct? It's, it's ordinal. It's ordered. Yes. Very good. Okay, so you're doing qualitative data that's ordinal, um, or you can do categorical data. Obviously, it doesn't care. Uh, but I per really like it for just creating fake ordinal data. Yeah. So I'm giving that four sriracha bottles because, what? yeah, being able to generate a lot of data fast to just for an ad hoc example or anything, this is really important to be able to do. And for practicing, you know, and also say, you know, if I've got a client and they've got a whole bunch of weird IDs, 25 character long IDs that I'm working with, then I can make up some very simple data that I can work with so that I can create a model and get that working and know if it's working or not rather than trying to deal with some 25 character ID. So yeah, learn how to make dummy data and lots of it. And I made some today and, and I'm constantly finding new really good sites that do uh, random ge data generators like um, URLs. You know, all of those emails you saw in my example, it came from a website that generates random data. So, all right, all okay. right, cool. So that is Excel Hot Tips. Be ready for the next episode because we're going to warm you up.